Hello future royals, welcome to a video that's going to help to try and explain some common questions grade 8 students have before coming to Riffle High School. We hope you enjoy the answers, meeting some of your teachers, and learning a little bit more about what to expect when you come into our hallowed halls next year. Looking forward to meeting every single one of you and we hope this helps. Have a great day. So a lot of grade 9s are nervous about finals because it's something you've never really experienced before. But your teachers will help you prepare by giving you reviews and doing practice questions with you in class. The best way that you can prepare for finals is by staying organized throughout the semester and studying ahead of time. As you move through high school, the content can get more difficult, but your study skills will also develop, so this will help you prepare. There's a ton of opportunities to learn so much. You could take foods, you could take drama, um, uh, photography, and my favorites are the ones that I teach. Uh, accounting, entrepreneurship, financial literacy. There's a grade 11 and a grade 12 financial literacy where you learn all about what money means and decisions that you're making now. So take them. Hello grade eights. So I thought I'd talk to you about three topics today. The first one I talk about is our dress code at Riffle. So at our dress code, the big thing to keep in mind, I think, is that you're allowed to wear things maybe at home or other places that really just don't fit in at the school, okay? So here are some highlights from our dress code. Uh, generally, immodest or inappropriate dress for the business of education. So again, that's maybe things that you can wear at home but that you can't maybe wear here. Dress with wording or graphics that is racist, sexist, profane, or demeaning to another person or group. Um, dress with wording or graphics that advocate violence. Dress with wording or graphics that advocate the consumption of alcohol or drugs. Now the second question, uh, attendance policy. So attendance policy is um, a good one to ask about or to know about. Uh, so our attendance policy, or sorry, attendance practice, it's not a policy. Uh, the practice is at 15 absences or 15 lates, a student may be um, taken out of the course. Okay, so now there, first of all, um, excused and unexcused are grouped together. But there's always, uh, we consider what the circumstances are. So some circumstances can lead to attendance exemptions. For example, maybe you have a specialist appointment you gotta get to and it's in Saskatoon and you're gone for three days. Well, if we can get documentation, we're not gonna count that against the, uh, with the practice, okay? But if you're just staying home a lot and there, it's, there is no good reason, well, those ones would count. Okay, so 15 lates or absences and you may be removed. Um, the final one, phones. So phones are not supposed to be in our classroom, but how that's dealt with is really on a teacher by teacher basis. So I know when I'm teaching, I have a little phone hotel that people would put their phones in at the start of class. If you need it during class, you can ask me or if I have an activity that I want you to actually work with the phones, I'd actually go get them. Um, some teachers may not have that, but still the expectation is uh, that you don't have the phones with you. Um, maybe they have a certain rule that you might be allowed to have it, but that'll be with that teacher. So overall, the assumption is by you that your phone is not supposed to be in class, so it's gonna be in your locker. All right, I think those are the three things I wanted to cover. Thanks, everybody. Well, it is the math that is going to help you out in real life. It's all of the skills that you're going to need to actually survive in the real world. So we talk about what happens when you have a job and you have to figure out overtime. What are some deductions you have to um, get on your paycheck? If you're going to build a deck, we're gonna figure out how to do the calculations. If you're going to go outside of Canada for a trip, we figure out how they do the different currencies in the different country. We talk about budgeting. We get to make stuff. So if you're a hands-on person who likes to actually do the things that you're um, uh, being taught, then this is the place for you. So we make uh, models of fishing shafts, we make models of birdhouses, and so no, at no time should you be saying, when am I ever going to use this? Because legitimately, every question that we talk about, you can find in real life, outside of math models. What are some subjects that are offered in high school that aren't available in elementary school? Well, I'm going to talk to you about some of the hands-on classes, since I'm in the practical and applied arts area of the school. So we have the shop classes, which I'm in the welding area here right now. Uh, so there's welding, there's woods, electrical, drafting, sheet metal, you name it with the shop stuff. We also have foods class. We've got photography, communication media, 
there's emergency services, and then you can branch into all these other areas across the school with lots of fun. get a lock we can get the same one every year do you need to buy your own lock do you have to share your locker every year will be assigned by the school and it will change location every year you do not need to buy your own lock we will provide you one with the first the first day of grade nine if you want to purchase your own for your gym locker you can do that the other ones are assigned and you must use a school locker and you will be having a locker of your own do not share with anybody else. They are assigned for a reason, specifically teeth. We have many different sports throughout three seasons in the fall, winter, and spring. From volleyball, football, basketball, curling, track and field, and many others. And we invite you all to come try out and join the teams and join the extracurricular activities that we have at the so yes, you can ask your math teacher for help, but unfortunately we can't ans give you answers. Uh, so if you're confused by what the question is asking, go ahead and ask, what does this mean? Uh, what does this word mean? We can answer those types of things. Um, but if you are stuck on how to do something, the best time to ask a question is before the test, okay? We love helping students and we want you to do your very, very best. So it's important that if you don't understand that you ask us and we'll take that time and we can figure it out so that hopefully by the test you understand it. But uh, if during the test you do have questions, we can ask, answer questions that are like, what do you mean by this question? What does this word mean? And hopefully that'll help. I'm Miss Fisher and I teach biology and health science uh, here at Ripple, I am also the education leader of science and math, so the numeracy department. This is my snake, Amber. She's very active right now. As you can tell, she's corn snake. She welcomes you here to Ripple, too. So, the question I'm going to answer for you today is how much homework should I expect? That's going to differ. You're probably not going to have the same amount of homework every single day. And it's also going to depend upon your own personal circumstance and the classes you're taking and how much work you do on your own while you're in class. So there's no easy answer to this, but I'll try and give you some ideas. I would guess if I had to put a number on it, you can probably expect somewhere around an hour, maybe two hours a day. That would include not just actual homework, but also preparation for your next classes and study time as well. Yes, you can bring your own device to Ripple. Uh, when you get here, you can access the Ripple Wi-Fi using your RCSD credentials. Uh, and also, just a note, make sure you're using it appropriately and you check with your teacher uh, so that you're following the procedures of the class. Of course, though, we do provide devices for students to use during class time here in the library or in the computer room and some of the classrooms. Welcome to Ripple, grade nines. Hi, folks. My name is Ms. Murray, and I'm the chaplain here at Michael A. Ripple Catholic High School, and I got a couple questions from you that I would love to answer. Question number one, do you need a certain number of volunteer hours per hour or per year for Catholic studies? This is a yes and no. Uh, at this school, no. Uh, we used to require three hours in your grade nine CAP project. We switched from Christian service hours to CAP with the curriculum renewal a few years ago. That's a lot of fancy words that you don't need to really understand or know about. Um, so the hours requirement are depending on the teacher and the school. Here at our school, we predominantly do a major project in each of your courses that reflects the learning and the content and the curriculum. So it basically wraps up the whole course in a variety of ways. And each teacher might have a way of asking those big questions, but ultimately your cap is worth 10% of your mark. There can be hours, but usually uh, there isn't. At this case, we make it more school appropriate. But the best thing I can ask for you is definitely ask your Catholic Studies teacher right away. And if you know who your Catholic Studies teacher is in the fall, if you get your timetable, you can shoot them an email for your grade nine and say, hey, should I be doing hours over the summer holidays, which I'm sure is priority number one for every single one of you, but a question that could be asked. 
The second question is a doozy, and I cannot wait to answer it. What are the school dynamics and the culture of the school? Well, the culture of the school is what we make the culture of the school. So you are going to be an integral part of creating the culture that you want to put forth. I would love to say that it's kindness, it's compassion, it's uh, opportunity, it's a voice in our faith, it's understanding who we are in conjunction to our faith and connected to one another. It is relational. Um, I can also say that students that are involved in choir are also on our sports team, which are also on band. So you're not necessarily pigeonholed into a certain area. You get to divulge and learn and grow in whatever talents and abilities. And the best advice I can give you is you control the culture. Often when we come into a new experience, whether a new teacher in a school or a new position or coming in as a grade nine student, we watch and we wait. Don't watch and wait, create. Make it what you want it to be because truly the culture is what we create here. I can say that this is a wonderful place to be. It is a tremendous place to learn and to grow. And the best goal that we have for you is that you become more yourself because who you are is exactly who you're supposed to be. So the culture is bringing those gifts, talents, and abilities, sharing them with our school community, being brave and vulnerable and courage, courageous, and in doing so, you make the culture. And your previous uh, students that have walked these halls have done the same. So you'll walk in here and you'll feel that, but then you get to contribute to that. So the culture is one that you make it, but definitely one of kindness, compassion, empathy, and caring, and you're gonna love it here. Love it, best place on earth. Take care, pals. Thank you.